picking a regimen for patients, two major factors are transplant eligibility versus ineligibility and also disease characteristics, especially genomic abnormalities. So in transplant ineligible patient population, um, the use of KRD is not universally endorsed, mainly because of the prelim analysis of a phase three Clarion trial that was comparing a VMP versus KMP. VMP is Velcade Melphalan Prednisone versus Carfilzomib melphalan prednisone and um, the KMP arm did not meet its um, efficacy endpoints PFS and OS and also the risk of cardiopulmonary toxicities were higher in the KMP group and KMP and BMP were uh, basically used for a transplant ineligible patient population in the Clarion trial. So based on those prelim data, the use is not endorsed in the transplant ineligible patient population but at the same time we have really good phase two data and also a data from carfilzomib trials in the relapsed refractory settings. Um, two major trials, uh, basically um, the ASPIRE trial which compared carfilzomib Revdex versus car, uh, Revdex and also the Endeavor trial that compared the doublet carfilzomib Dex versus Velcade Dex, they both showed prominent improvement in PFS and OS um, in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. So just based on the data in the relapsed refractory setting and phase two um, elegant studies in upfront studies, it makes perfect sense to pick KRD as an induction regimen for high risk patient populations. And also one other thing that is extremely important um, is um, the toxicity profile. Velcade uh, is known for causing debilitating neuropathy. So if you have a patient who um, already has bad neuropathy, um, it makes sense to go with another proteasome uh, inhibitor agent such as carfilzomib.